All right, welcome back to series two. In our first series, we installed Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And for part two, which is this series, we're going to install a very, very powerful administrative tool called Webmin. Now, people with familiarity to Linux and other types of browser-based administrative tools, you may be familiar with cPanel, which is a paid uh, management tool. Webmin is completely free. That's what we're going to use. And I'm going to fire up my terminal. And I noticed based on my last video that the green on black was rather difficult to see. Just a contrast in the way that video compresses made it difficult to read what was going on. So I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to change my foreground, my text color, to be a white. And hopefully this will give us a little bit better visibility on the terminal output. So let's get started with the installation of Webmin. I've got our commands right here. And let me scroll down. What we're going to do is install some dependencies first. And usually the dependencies uh, can potentially install the entire application for us. And uh, sometimes they'll even output uh, error messages. We're going to get past all that if you'll just bear with me. So we're going to copy our first command. And we're going to paste that into our terminal. Hit enter. Provide our account password. Hit enter. And it's going to go through the uh, installation process here, downloading any dependencies. And we'll see what happens. I've seen an error occur on this a time or two. We might just get past it smoothly this time. I'm going to install the second dependency. Copy and paste that into my terminal. Hit enter. Downloading and installing these dependencies. And we've successfully completed that dependency download and installation. Copy our third one and we're going to paste that into our terminal. Hit enter. Downloading that and installing. Went through that one flawlessly. And we're going to now download with this command webmin itself. Paste it in our terminal. Hit enter. Let that information download. And once this deb package downloads, we're going to use this final command by copying and pasting that into our terminal to decompress and then run the installation scripts. So this looks like it's a, a decent sized package. It's all browser based. You'll find that with webmin, just like cPanel, you're going to have access to virtually all the functionality of your computer uh, from a remote environment. You'll be able to manage your Apache web server, setting up and creating managing virtual directories, create and uh, authenticate Samba shares, and uh, manage your MySQL and up even server updates. So we're going to paste in our final command hit enter, let that run. Now like I said this is a browser based administrative tool and we'll be able to access this from our web browser uh, on a default port which is 10,000 uh, port 10,000 localhost colon 10,000 or your server name colon 10,000 and typically this information is output here uh, at the time when, when this is all completed. So let's see what we've got looks like potential errors, dependency problems, prevent configuration of webmin, webmin pins on apt show versions, however apt show versions is not installed. Okay, so let's do this. App show versions, we're going to copy that, we're going to type sudo apt get install, and we'll paste that in there and hit enter. Try apt get f install. See these are some of those little nuances that sneak up on you. So what we're going to do is we're going to type sudo and then we're going to paste that in and hit enter. Enter yes 
and it's downloaded that and installing that and then what we're going to go back to do is copy that last one that failed based on the dependencies that were not present and once this is finished we'll give the installation of webmin uh, another go so this is just about there alright so it looks like webmin installed completed so we don't need to do that last step and it's telling us where it was installed to so I'm going to copy this URL now this is your server name Linux or light server it's also accessible by replacing light server with localhost or your IP address of the machine that you're on so I'm going to copy this I'm going to fire up my browser and then I'm going to paste this in my browser and hit enter okay so what we've got here is a uh, it's, it's considering this connection as untrusted and what that means is if you right click up here or actually left click on that you'll get uh, typically on a secure site this may go green uh, to, to indicate that you're on a HTTPS connection what this is is simply your server itself generated certificate a SSL certificate and because it's not signed by a trusted uh, uh, distributor or registrar type entity it's considered untrusted however your information is still encrypted you're still safe your data is still secure however it's just not being provided by a trusted source okay so I'm gonna click understand risks I'm gonna add this exception and then I'm gonna confirm that exception now at this point we're gonna log into our server with your account name or root I'm gonna log in with Scott that's my account name and I'm going to provide my account password and I'm going to tell it to remember it and then I'm going to click login so we've logged into webmin and you'll see that right off the bat it shows you any potential fixes updates that need made and any services that might or might not have launched properly we've got 36 packages available to update you can do all that from your browser rather than having to run your update from your terminal and we've got access to all of our servers we've installed patchy in a previous episode here under patchy and we'll get into more detail in future episodes you can configure virtual servers configure domains to host your own websites on your own machine and avoid any, any other costs that might be associated with that by having a hosting provider provide your hosting for your websites uh, mysql database server and what we see here is indicating that the mysql server is not running and it currently with my credentials that I use to log in I do not have access to it what I'll need to do is log in as my root account so I'll provide the username root my account password and the root password are the same so I'll click save and you'll see now that MySQL database server is active and running from here you can enable stop start your MySQL server we also have access to uh, like we had earlier uh, Apache and at this point Samba file sharing where we could uh, make available um, files folders assign permissions and credentials give rights to different users who would have access across our local network to access file shares give them read write permissions and things of that nature so as you can see it's very very powerful tool we've just basically looked at the surface of it we've got uh, underneath others here you've got file manager which will open up in this window of a virtual directory where you will be able to see all the files and folders on your server now this does require Java and we'll, we'll install that later we'll get the command and install that from the terminal and at that point we'll tell that uh, tell Java that uh, this is a trusted application and at that point we'll be able to browse and manage files copy and delete and move and rename and change uh, executable command chmod and sign owners and things of that nature so as this being part two in our series and as in, if you missed part one uh, check that out that's where we installed Apache MySQL and PHP 
So part three is coming up. We're going to get a little deeper into this, do a little more intense configuring, and maybe go slow things down a little bit uh, where we get a better understanding of this because a lot of the things in Linux can be intimidating. Some things are always uh, quite unclear, um, and oftentimes you'd never be able to accomplish this without some source available to you online to at least copy and paste these commands without uh, having taken a formal education to understand the principles of running Linux. So hope to see you in part three where we'll get into a little bit more depth, slow things down a little bit, and hopefully get a better understanding. At that point, we're going to install Axgen email server and uh, configure a few different things as far as setting up domains, different email accounts, and uh, give different uh, rights to different users and possibly even some uh, network shares. And later on, we'll get into setting up Apache where we can conf configure a domain, set up uh, rights and rules and directives for um, access and permissions, and we'll have some fun in our firewall where we can give complete control over who has access to our server. We can even block complete countries. As for me, I live in the United States, do business in the United States and Canada. I uh, want to keep those hackers out. want to keep the bad guys at bay. And so we can do all that with a firewall. Very easy to configure once you know a few basics. So look forward to talking to you in Series 3. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.